Arduino modding a broken or defunct guitar, like this SG right here, can turn it from unusable to your main guitar. This is not an easy task, but it is definitely attainable with the right tools and know-how. This will be a guide on how to do so. The main benefits are to increase the pull rate for low latency gameplay and PC slash console intercompatibility. This is why I would not recommend doing this to a Wii guitar unless it is very broken. Simply adding an adapter like this Wiiko or a Rafnet is the easiest way of getting a low latency controller. Also avoid GH5 guitars, I will explain why later. The materials you'll need are pretty simple. The tools you'll need are a little more complex, some cleaning supplies, and some safety stuff. And finally, Guitar Configurator. Go thank Sanjay900 with a donation. This is an incredible tool that makes guitar modding much more accessible and friendly to people who don't know how to code, like me. We'll start by taking the guitar apart and cleaning it, like in this video. If the neck is detachable, we'll simply be cleaning this and setting it aside. This one's not. Uh, these usually always use uh, T10 screws, but in the case of PS2 guitars, like most PS2 guitars and Wartars is actually use Phillips screws and we're gonna have to take off the body in order to take off the neck, so. These use plastic standoff, so if you can't really seem to take off the back of the body, um, don't force it, just keep unscrewing the screw until it, you know, comes free. Next, we'll take out the fret PCB, unscrew the two small Phillips screws, and take it out and we will be greeted with the frets. So you may notice some black crap in the form of a ring around some parts of your PCB. Maybe some little specks of black on the contact and that you can really barely see but that are definitely there. Uh, this is what you want to clean off. So grab a paper towel, some isopropyl, and just pretty simply uh, rub off all of the black gunk. This comes from the fret pads themselves flaking off at the edges of the black conductors. You should be doing this every once in a while as this happens with heavy usage. This can lead to a bad connection as the excess material might prevent the pad from pressing all the way down and bridging the two halves of the contacts together. Pads also may develop indents in the shape of the contacts and this can also prevent a good connection from happening. So you'll want to rub these down with a q-tip or a paper towel as well and get them nice and flat. Get them nice and flat and smooth. Uh, they should be pretty matte, not shiny at all. You can see the difference between very matte, flat, and smooth and uh, this is very shiny and bumpy and gross looking. Now these contacts look basically perfect, uh, very very clean, but the pads themselves are starting to develop a bit of a shine so I'm gonna uh, rub them down real quick. So yeah, you can kind of see the difference between very flat, matte, and smooth, and uh, ones that are developing some indents, so. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm gonna uh, put the pads back on, cut them, and set them aside. Now there are a bunch of different ways that you can cut your pads, such as this, which is what I call bliss cut, or, you know, side cut, where you leave material on the sides like this. This gives you a bit more tactility while still keeping them relatively loose after they've been pressed. This is what I call tall cut, which is uh, leaving the tops and bottoms, and this uh, facilitates more tappy play. If you like to slide spam, this is probably what you're gonna do, but it definitely loosens them up quite a bit and still keeps them uh, the life of them pretty long. And then cross cut. This is definitely the longest lasting out of all of them. Definitely the most tactile, but definitely hard to do. Pick whatever you want, depending on what kind of feel you're going after. If you feel like that they're too tight, just cut more off. And if you feel like that you cut too much off, you're fucked. So I'm going to be doing side cut because that's my favorite. So with a very sharp exacto knife, I'm going to be just poking the material right where it stops curving. And you want to do that for both sides on all five. Now that all of them are slit, you can slip your cuticle scissors in and just start to cut. So I can definitely see there's some, you know, pretty obvious size mismatches, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim some of these up so that they're all nice and even. I'm just gonna cut a slit and then cut off. Bang. Done. 
You can see the frets are a little discolored, but these are actually very, very clean. If you see a bunch of dust or particles or something like that, you definitely want to clean those off as soon as you can. These have sticker residue all over them, which is awesome. You're a fucking monster if you put stickers on your frets. But yeah, if you see any gunk or dust or anything like that, you can use compressed air to either blow it off or rub it around with a paper towel and isopropyl. If you see any on the frets, that means that there is definitely some in the neck pocket. Now that the frets are cut and clean, we're gonna just uh, screw it back together and set it aside. Oh yeah, I forgot to cut the fret ridge. That's a classic move. Cool. Now, bodies can vary a lot, though. If you need to take apart the body to get to the neck, then you should be, you know, ready to go. Bodies with detachable necks, however, need a little more attention. I can't take this off. Why can't I take it off? Ugh. Screws can usually be found on the back of the body or on the front of the body behind the faceplate. There also might be screws on the front and they're like tiny little Phillips ones that you need a pretty thin screwdriver to get. So uh, just, yeah, keep that in mind. If you have a body with say a battery cover, uh, there will be a cable that runs from the back of the body to the front of the body where the main PCB is. Uh, you can very easily just disconnect that wire and uh, you should be good to go. You can also do a little trick by leaving the faceplate on after you're done unscrewing and then you can take it out with all the screws in there. They don't have to friggin put screws in all the holes and stuff. It's a you know, little pro tip. So now we need to plan our method of attack. We need to plan where exactly the pipe eco is gonna go to ensure that we have exactly enough wire to route everything. If you don't, you'll need to rip out the entire wire strip and uh, cut some wires yourself and tin them yourself. It's kind of annoying. So uh, plan carefully so you have to do that as little as possible. I recommend keeping everything screwed down as you do this and just working on the guitar directly. So to detach a wire, I'm gonna be just putting a blob of solder on here so that it melts all of the contacts and then just pushing down on the wire until it falls through. And there you go. And I'm gonna be doing this for all of them. Please solder in a ventilated area or with a solder fume extractor so that you don't breathe in any of the toxic chemicals that come from solder fumes. They are brain damaging. And now we can pretty simply just solder pump. Okay, so now we can see where we need to route all the wires so that we can connect everything to the Pi Pico. This is gonna be a bit of a stretch, but uh, we can make it work. I'll show you how. And yeah, these are gonna be kind of an issue. I'm actually gonna cut a slot in this uh, neck piece so that we can uh, reach the pins over here. If you are gonna do this, please wear safety glasses. I certainly am. Piece of plastic could hit you in the eye and then you could be blind for life. Woo! There we go. Now we can route the wires inside the body out to the side so that we can just connect them up like this. I'm gonna cut this connector right about here and then rip off this uh, plug. And we're gonna be using this to protect the USB cable. Oh no, oh God. My whammy bar fell apart. Now all the pieces are everywhere. I don't know how to reassemble it. This is so annoying. Okay, shut up. I'm gonna show you how to put it back together. So the potentiometer should be in the housing still. Uh, if it isn't, just put it through with the pins facing this nub right here. Now we're gonna take these two pieces and we are going to fit them together like this. Uh, they are mirrors of each other, so make sure you have them correct. Loop the spring through their claws. Just like this. And we're gonna stick them onto the potentiometer. And they should be separated by this slot right here. On the whammy bar, there are teeth, and this corresponds to the flat part of the potentiometer. So we're gonna fit them together like this, and then kind of finagle them around until the until the rings of the claw pieces are are nice and snugly fit around the whammy bar. Might need something to poke at them until the whammy bar just kind of fits through like this. And then you can put the side on. And then we can loop the whammy bar through the hole and position the brackets in place so they fit in and slide all the way down. Now if it's like this, 
uh, and you see a big old gap, just uh, take it out again, uh, flip this piece, and reinsert it. There we go. Simple. Okay, we have everything desoldered and planned how long the wires need to be. Now let's talk about wiring to the Pipeco. To start off, I'll be doing Whammy and start in Select just to verify everything is working properly. Then we'll program the Pipeco. If you look on the back of the Pico, you can see the names of each of the pins. GP is shortened for a GPIO, which is shortened for General Purpose Input Output. This is what we'll be attaching the buttons to, like Start and Select, Strumbar, and the frets. If you touch any of these GP pins to ground, that's how the Pipeco detects a button is pressed. As for Whammy, it is an analog component, which means it spits out a range of values instead of just being on or off. This means we'll need an analog to digital converter. There are three of these, labeled underscore A, after the name. Whammy potentiometers usually follow this pattern, voltage, wiper, and ground. The middle wiper wire is what we'll solder the ADC pin to. Voltage will go to 3.3 volt, and ground will go to ground. If you get the outer two pins wrong, that's okay. The signal will end up backwards, where it starts high and ends low instead of low to high. Don't worry, we can easily fix this in software. As for start and select, you can pick any of the GP pins and they should work. It doesn't matter which, but it is useful to know which pins you ended up choosing. Once everything is soldered together, we're ready to test. Plug in the PyPico to the micro USB cable, and we'll open up Guitar Configurator. You'll be greeted by this screen. At the bottom, there's a Found Devices dropdown. You can select the PyPico. If you don't see it, unplug the PyPico, press and hold the white button on the top, and plug it back into your computer. You should see it pop up now. Hit continue, and at the top, you can click start programming. In a few seconds, you should see it's done, and we can start configuring now. Buttons can be configured by hovering over them. In this case, start and select. You can select the pin manually, or you can automatically detect it. This is what I do for testing. Press automatically detect, press the button on the controller, and you should see the pin highlighted in green if the soldering is all good. If it isn't, go back and check your wiring. If that looks okay, try to reflow the connections by remelting the solder and then trying again. Now we need to do the same with Whammy. Automatically detecting doesn't work here, so I just select the pin that I soldered the wiper pin to. In my case, this is 28. At the bottom, you can hit the right button and wait a bit for the Pi Pico to reconnect. Now we need to calibrate the whammy. This needs to be done after you hit right. Hover over the whammy and select Calibrate Whammy. We need to identify the minimum value of the whammy potentiometer. So leave the whammy bar as is and hit OK. For the maximum value, press and hold the whammy bar down while hitting OK. For dead zones, this identifies how far the whammy needs to be pressed down before it starts moving the slider. I like to press it a tiny little bit before hitting next. Now you can test the value, and it should be working. Note that if the value starts on the left and ends on the right, it's backwards. That's okay, just hit OK and turn on Invert Whammy. It should do this automatically. Hit right, and if all goes well, it works. Yay! Now we can test in your joystick tester of choice. I'm on Windows, so I'll type in joystick in the Windows search and hit Enter. Double click the controller that says Arduino. So we can see that Whammy works and Start and Select works. Let's go back and wire everything else up now. Okay, so I'm kind of glad that happened because I can explain why this doesn't work. Now, if you want to wire up the strum bar, you can hijack the connections off of the PCB, but in order to do this, we're gonna have to cut off all of the traces uh, that go to the rest of the PCB. 
Uh, this is for a few reasons. It's kind of complicated, but essentially the ground plane is going to swallow up all of our connections. So, so taking a good sharp X-Acto knife, we're going to be making some pretty deep cuts into where the traces are. Other than that, the wiring's pretty simple. Uh, so we're just attaching this pin and this pin to uh, any of the GPIO lines. And then for ground, um, we're basically just soldering it to one point and then bridging that uh, across the two points. And um, that gives us our uh, ground connection. As for the frets, this is where it gets a little more complicated. There are two types of PCBs, ones that have six pins and ones that have eight pins. Six pins are really simple. You just have one wire going to each of the frets and then one wire for ground. Ground goes to ground, and then each of the frets go to whatever GPIO pin you want. A pins usually happen on PS3 and Xbox Les Pauls and Explorers. There's three different ground pins that go to separate frets to form a matrix, similar to how a keyboard works. Now we really don't need three ground pins, and having a matrix is kind of useless, so we'll just condense all those ground pins into one pin, tie that to the Pi Pico, and then wire it up like normal. There's a slight variance in how you actually wire these frets compared to six pin. So here's a diagram for both kinds of PCBs you'll encounter. This is where I'll also mention GH5 guitars and why you should avoid them. There are actually four pins that go from the neck to the body, and it's all controlled by a microcontroller that essentially spits out the data from the frets and the slider bar. So because of this, it limits the pull rate to about 100 hertz, which is pretty annoying and uh, kind of forces you to rip out the slider bar and the connector and hardwire it to the Pi Pico, so, which is pretty annoying. If this is your first time, please avoid GH5 guitars, okay? So now everything should be wired up. So I'm gonna take this thing and Okay, this is just to get this thing to look a little nicer. Now usually in guitar bodies, there are these things, which are uh, cable bridges. I guess this is left over from production, so I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna take this wire, kind of, and so now I can pretty simply just wrap the wire around here, plug it into the Arduino, and now when I tug it, it doesn't, it doesn't pull on the Pico. It just, you know, uh, gets tightened by this. Now, if you want to restore tilt functionality, you can buy tilt switches. You'll want to angle these facing down slightly so that you actually have to tilt up in order to, in order to actuate it. Now, another thing you can do is add a PCB that you can add uh, cherry key switches to. Uh, you can buy these off of JLC PCB or something. I'll have a link in the description to the Gerber file. Or if you want to send me 20 bucks on coffee, then I'll send you this along with some key switches and some stickers. I like these designs. They're cool. All right, let's screw this thing together. And you can add tilt by going into configure tilt, set it to digital, and bind the pin. Yay. So now that everything works, let's uh, see if I can hit some sections with this thing. It's a 2-2. Two -two. I have not played this song in like five years. Well, that would have been really cool. Okay.
That would have been so cool. Ha 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 ha.